Hi guys, I'm Hayes. I'm an artist and speed painter from Malaysia and today I have something very different that I want to share with you guys. This is a helmet that I've just painted and I've did this uh, helmet for about two weeks with all store-bought products. So today, I'm going to show you how I do this helmet from start to finish. Everything will be listed, everything that I use. But a few disclaimer first, I'm actually not a professional um, automotive uh, artist. So I don't have an oven for spraying and I don't have a high pressure spray gun as well. So I've done everything with store-bought items. Um, so this is actually my fourth helmet that I've done so far using the same method. So I hope you guys can enjoy um, today's tutorial and if you have any questions please let me know and of course subscribe to all my social media and also to my youtube channel and let's get started so the first thing that i did was using um, procreate on the ipad and you can actually see the tutorials for all the portraits that i've done so these are actually two portraits that i've done for this helmet uh, one is a Taiwanese uh, girl and then the other one is a Malaysian girl so the reason why uh, there's two portraits because there's the left side and the right side and then there's actually some sort of a concept um, behind this illustration so I'll get into that later so actually I use Procreate on iPad for the design of the helmet as well but as you can see this helmet is round and it's really difficult to unfold into a template so I've done the design as best as I can but the design elements have to be repositioned again on the helmet so this is just like a rough draft and also I can't really do all the pin stripings here that you see um, accurately on Procreate because I can't feel the contour of the helmet when I'm using the iPad so it's easier if you just use do it on the helmet where you can feel the contour and get the lines to be flowing exactly where you want them to flow design using a tracing paper which then I can transfer the design to Procreate let's talk a bit about the theme of the uh, helmet so as you can see there's two sides here one side is a Taiwanese girl with a Taiwanese um, fighter jet and this is actually representing he, the, my client's wife so he wanted one side of the helmet to represent his wife uh, which is a Taiwanese and he's actually from Malaysia where I'm from so here we have a Malaysian girl and the fighter jet from Malaysia as well so I link both visuals together using the smoke from the planes and also we have some pin strapping going on and then here we have my client's name in Chinese calligraphy so the next thing we want to do is to measure out the logos for the stencil so the stencil for the logo is very very important so it's important that we get an accurate measurement but here I'm using a plastic ruler but if you can get a measuring tape I have one I'm just too lazy to get it out of my cabinet and also you have to be, I'm going to measure this logo as well before we proceed to designing them in Illustrator. So now I'm using Illustrator uh, on my Mac. Using Illustrator, I actually reposition and resize the logo. So once I've resized the logo, it's uh, easier if I just export it to a DXF format, which is compatible for importing to my Silhouette Cameo designer software which actually bridges the Silhouette Cameo cutter. This is actually a cutter that uh, cuts stencils and cut paper. It can cut anything up to 1mm thick if I'm not mistaken and even thicker if you get another specific blade. So once in Silhouette Cameo, I need to clean up the lines before I cut them and once I'm ready to cut, and I position them and I set it to cut. Right now you can see the slow camera is actually cutting up my uh, stencils and I cut a couple of stencils, uh, one is on a white vinyl and then a couple on a transparent vinyl because it's easier if I use transparent once I've done a layer or two so that I can match the position accurately so if you have a transparent sticker you should use them as well but you definitely need opaque sticker because it's much easier for you to see and to apply for the first few times. I remember there's never enough stencils so if you can cut more I use about seven to eight stencils on my entire journey with this helmet so if you can cut as many as you can. Next we're gonna go into Photoshop and in Photoshop I'm just gonna lay out the design elements for all the subject matter onto a A3 size paper. So 
this is going to be uh, positioned onto the helmet for testing and I want them in the exact size that I want them to be on the helmet so I again I measure on the helmet first to get the size of the visual that I want and then I transfer the sizing to Photoshop for each element and then we will print them out using my friendly printer so now we're going to start preparing for the spraying and for the first thing that we should do is to prepare our working area so the first thing I want to do is to prepare my chair where my uh, helmet will rest on so first I cover my chair with plastic and then after that I put my uh, turntable on this is just a turntable that I bought from IKEA uh, and I also taped it with plastic so that no spray or paint can get on it because I really really want this to last for a long time and then after that, I have this old cat scratching post that I have for a long time already. I put it onto the uh, turntable and I also cover it up with plastic so that it doesn't scratch or scratch my helmet and then also paint and spray doesn't get on it because I need to let my cat use this post once more after I'm done with this project. So once we are done with that, we can place our helmet onto the cat scratching post but let's just call it the helmet stand for now. So once our, my helmet is on, there is one very important rule that we must remember when we are customizing helmet is that we can never drop the helmet at any time, even if it did not break because once we drop a helmet on a hard surface, the helmet is considered not safe anymore to use for riding or racing. So we can never ever drop our helmet. We have to be really, really careful with that, guys. So now what I want to do is with the printouts that I printed um, just now, I'm going to position them on top of my helmet to test their sizing and their positioning. So if anything doesn't match, I have to print it again. But luckily for me this time, everything matches up. So we're good to go to the next step. So first we have the masking tapes and the blue ones is of course better but it's really hard to get them in um, my country so I have a lot of these in abundance but they don't really stick well and if you stick on the surface long enough they leave a very very bad adhesive residue that's really difficult to remove so we need a lot of masking tapes and these, we need these as well these are double-sided tapes. Um, you see why later we'll need them. After that, we will need our sprays. So the first spray that we need is of course the primer. So we have a Rust-Oleum plastic primer. I have a couple of them with a couple of colors but uh, the design I'm using uses is white now and I thought to buy a new one. So after that we need our base coat. There was going to be yellow. This is cheap spray from my country. It's like really really cheap like $1.50 in one US dollar fifty cent if converted. Yep, these are all the cheap spray, black, red and yellow. So other than that we also need our um, special effect spray. So special effect spray, I have this reflecting steel color spray and I also have this pearlescent um, effect color spray which is really really nice. I also have this Krylon Crystal Clear. So this is the original Crystal Clear and it's it works for acrylic paint. So because I'll be using acrylic paint for my visuals, uh, so I can't use like an oil-based lacquer because that would just melt everything right off. This is the same one but if you see there's a slight difference, it says here uh, triple thick crystal. It means that one layer of this is actually three layers of this. So this is really good because sometimes if I want a really thick layer and uh, once I have the thick layer, I can see through the layers and see like some sort of like a 3D effect. So I like using this because it's quick. And of course, other than sprays, we will also need our acrylic paint. So I, what I have here is all my old Holland acrylics. I started out using cheap uh, acrylics but then they were just too diluted and transparent for me to use. I need a lot of layers to finish the helmets and because of that the helmet has a lot of unsightly layers so when I changed to Old Holland it's really expensive but um, one layer does the job so I'm really grateful for that because it really cuts down the time I can work on other projects. We will also need an airbrush so I haven't used this for a very very long time so We'll see how it goes. I'm not that good at it. And then of course we need our brushes. I don't have a pin strapping brush. So which is going to be a problem. But I think 
I can make do with some of the brushes that I have either a liner brush like this Okay, because I did not anticipate that I would use so many tools and materials there are a lot of tools and materials that I left out so uh, anything that I left out, I will be listing them down in the side for every stage uh, of my process and if you need have any questions, you can always comment in the comment section below so let's go over the basic steps of how to customize a helmet so the first step will always be masking so we use masking to cover places that we don't want paint to get onto and then after that we will be um, sanding the helmet first because once we sand them then the paint can stick to the helmet easier and after that we will be uh, either spraying or painting the helmet so once we are done with each pass each layer we need to spray a clear spray so this clear spray would actually seal whatever that we've painted and then if we put any masking on top it won't peel out and then it also gives a very clean unmasking later on so which of course leads to the next step after the spray uh, the clear spray we would be unmasking the masking off and then the whole and then the whole uh, process repeats again and again so these are all the basic steps that we need to do for each layer but sometimes I don't send in between sending it's mostly for the first stage itself but I send when there are defects and if the surface is not as smooth as I want them to be after the clear spraying stage so that's the basic steps and now let's move on to customize our helmet so the first step will be our first initial masking so all these moving parts have to be masked and also this uh, with all the metal parts here has to be masked as well and of course the rubber parts needs to be masked as well um, you should be very careful about rubber parts because some of the rubber parts are not that receptive towards adhesive tape so like um, this one the rubber part for this part here does not actually stick to anything so tape can usually fall off so which leads to my next point which is once you mask your helmet you need to be sure to finish your helmet as fast as possible within one week or two because if you don't the adhesive will start to melt if you if you live in a hot country like mine the adhesive of the masking tape will melt and then when you peel off the masking tape there will be a lot of sticky residue left and it's a pain in the ass to clean them out so make sure you finish your helmet and you make sure you clear your schedule for your helmet painting and customizing once you begin the first masking so some of the areas for the helmet uh, which are the small metal fittings I'm not using a masking tape to mask them I'm actually using a double sided tape to mask them because masking tape does not stick to these areas well they peel off really really easily so I find that double sided tape because tape, once you remove the backing they are easily pushed into areas and I can use that to effectively mold uh, onto areas that are difficult to be masked with normal masking tape like these areas and these areas as well, the small ridges here and everything I can just use the double sided tape to push it in with the pen knife which is great for that also make sure that your masking is very precise and make sure it's pressed down because once you press it down um, it doesn't bleed that much so if it, you don't press it down and there's air pockets beneath your masking it will start bleeding when you spray on them and when you paint on them especially so make sure you press down your masking before you paint or you spray some of the useful tools here that you want to use is blade, scissors and also a pressing tool and also a stick where you can push masking tape onto areas that you can't get to uh, with your fingers so that would be great and then once we've masked our painting it's time to sand our helmet you can use a sanding block here which I have also forgotten to list in the uh, material section so I love to use a sponge because it's softer and it's more even so it's great to use a sponge but you can wet them or dry sand your helmet but if you're dry sanding your helmet you have to be careful not to overdo it so you just want to scuff the surface of the helmet so that it becomes non-glossy and it becomes matte so this will make sure that the paint that you spray on will stick to the helmet as for the grit of the sanding sponge it's good to use like a medium grit not too not too uh, harsh maybe like a four five six hundred kind of grit uh, sanding sponge would be great so the first thing after that we need to do is to spray our helmet 
uh, with a primer spray. So this is a plastic primer because our helmet is plastic. The color that I chose to spray for my primer is white because my base is mostly white. So if your helmet color is red or blue, you can choose to have those colors as your primer if you can find them at your hardware store. So to spray your primer, you have to spray a very, very light coat because once you have a very light coat, it actually creates like a surface for paint to grab onto. Then after that, you can spray a thicker layer uh, if you want opacity, like what I'm doing right now because everything is white, so I'm spraying another couple of layers for opacity. And you don't want to hold your nozzle at a spot for too long because once you hold your nozzle at a spot for too long, it will start to drip and dripping is something that we don't want especially when we are painting a helmet so using a turntable is very very useful for this kind of application also one more thing when you're testing your can and if the paint doesn't come out do not face the nozzle in front of you your face and start pressing the nozzle because you might accidentally you know, spray your own face so yeah that's something you do not want to do and the next step I want to do for my layer is uh, to, pay, to, to spray a pearlescent uh, effect onto the helmet. So this is an effect that I really really love because it's, it really gives a whole dimension of a metallic uh, automotive spray effect. So a light coat would do already and as usual don't spray too thick or things might get dripping. Another important thing to note is to always, always wear a gas mask when you're spraying. Even though you feel that uh, the spray smells good or the spray doesn't really disturb your nose. But trust me, because I've been doing this for quite some time and I've gotten so exposed to solvents to the point where I, if I smell thinner or solvent for 5 minutes straight, I would already get like headache or stomach ache. So it's really, really bad. So these kind of things get worse once you get overexposed. So it's better to not expose yourself to them at all if you can. And by now, my first layer is done, which is the white and the pearlescent layer. So to finish up the layer, as I said, you, I'm going to spray a clear coat all over it. So this is an acrylic clear coat and it's great for acrylic paint if you're using water-based paint. So um, it's great for sealing it in between layers and I use this for almost all my helmets and this is great. Before I realize I have to do this every layer, I've been peeling off paint every time I unmask. It's a pain in the ass. So make sure you spray a clear coat after you're done with each layer. And this is my first layer and I want a perfect layer so I'm spraying my clear coat now. When it comes to spraying your clear coat, you need to make sure there is enough strength and protection in them. So we need to spray multiple layers. And once we have multiple layers, we can be a little bit more uh, careless. Like for example, if we knock things onto the helmet or if you scratch it or uh, bump it onto a corner of the table, uh, the paint won't come off that easily for now, okay? Because we have not gotten to the last clear coat yet. But the first few layers, you can't bump into any corners or scratch it with your fingers. It might still come off because there's just one layer of clear coat. So make sure you spray your clear coat and because that will protect your helmet from any accidents that you make. Also, it's good not to put your helmet like that to paint because you never know what's going to be underneath it or poking your helmet from this area. Scratches and marks and everything here and then fur and hair and dust. So always do it on a stand or on a turntable. So now that my first prime white layer is done, I'm going to start masking my helmet for all the yellow parts which are um, these areas all the yellow parts here so I'm masking all around them so that everything else doesn't get yellow on them. So this is a difficult uh, part to mask but I think masking it has really really improved the aesthetic of this uh, helmet. And also we want to mask um, this yellow part here on the logo and this is will be the first time that we use our stencil. So how we use our stencil this time is to peel off um, both the reds and the yellow parts, leaving just the outer areas. And then we're going to use a track, something called 
what we call a transfer tape on top of the sensor. So this transfer tape is actually for the application of vinyl stickers that are cut out and I've been doing a couple of projects so I have transfer tape lying around. If you don't have transfer tape, nah, you really need a transfer tape. So it's good, you, you just press the transfer tape down and then when you peel it out, um, the whole stencil just comes up nicely and then you stick it onto the helmet and then once you stick it on the helmet, you press everything down nicely you can then peel off your transfer tape. Now about this transfer tape, you can also reuse them for the other side of a stencil or for about four to five times until you realize it doesn't stick anymore. If you, that would be great if you are being economic. So after that, um, once I've done masking, I have to cover everything else with plastic. So this plastic here, I made a mistake because I use a transparent plastic and I can't really see where it's covered, where it's not because it's transparent. So sometimes overspray do get through. So um, be careful when you're doing using a plastic. So now before we continue to spray our helmet yellow for our next layer, uh, we will actually press down the masking tape first to make sure everything is really pressed down so that there's no bleeding whatsoever. And then after that, we will spray our yellow with our spray. So this spray is very, very transparent, but we have a white layer underneath as a base, so it's all right. But if you're spraying yellow on black, that will not work. Nothing will appear. You need like 30, 50 layers. So make sure you spray white first if you're using yellow, red, greens. Yellow, red, greens, purple maybe. Yeah, but if you're using lacquer-based paints basically, but if you're using imported sprays like Iron Lab Montana, you probably can get away with spraying those colors on black, maybe? So now um, we're gonna spray our clear because we are done with our yellow layer and I want to commit them. I want to commit the changes for this layer and spraying clear to protect them because um, right after this, we're gonna mask the reds out. So I'm not going to unmask anything at this point because I can just cut open this area to mask the reds here. So once I mask the reds here, once I mask the reds here, I can also mask the red for the back here. So this, for this time, I'm masking the yellow with just a plastic. I'm not using any tape because it, my clear might not have gotten through this hole. So I don't want to have yellow paint peeling up because it will be a pain in the ass to spray again to clean up all the splays and everything because this is a part I cannot get too easily. Yeah, so after that, I will also mask again with um, my stencil here for the logo. So for this logo part, I am still uh, retaining the previous mask, which is the one that's outside. I'm just sticking in the inner parts here right now using the same transfer tape method and stencil method. I'm still using the same piece of stencil from just now because I saved the words from the application earlier on and I used that to stick it on top of the shark word. And so um, what you can do is leave a strip of backing for the bottom half of the decal and that would make it easier for you to position the stencil is, um, before you commit to sticking them down. If you just um, start sticking the stencil down, you might find that you stick once you have stuck and then it's wrong and then when you start to peel off, everything starts falling apart. So this is a good way to get things committed before you actually stick everything down. So now we are back to our spraying station and uh, we are going to spray red and make sure we are going to make sure that we spray it uh, until it's opaque because red is also transparent as well and I'm using a lacquer based paint so it's very important to spray until it's opaque. And now it's a nighttime spraying session and I'm gonna spray my clear coat right now to seal my yellow and my reds in before I unmask. So I make sure that I spray my clear in so that I'm protected against accidents. So right now the most terrifying and exciting part begins which is the unmasking 
this is our first unmasking so it's going to be very exciting but terrifying so what we want to do is not panic if three things happen so if pain peel out when you are unmasking don't panic it can still be saved but if you are worried about that happening if you notice the paint are starting to peel out together with the tape uh, put it back on and use the knife to score it first before you continue putting them out and if you peel out and you realize that your paint has bled out or there's oversprays beneath some plastic don't panic because we can still remove them and I'll tell you how after this at this point you shouldn't be too worried because you just started on the helmet it's still very forgiving but it's nice to have a neat start to our helmet painting journey isn't it? I know we're gonna be unmasking the logo like I say sometimes you need to score between the uh, decal and the paint and that would make it easier for you to uh, peel off but when you do that if your knife starts to drag out paint you should stop and just try to peel out the decal first so if you're doing this for the first time you should just wing it and try it because all these things comes with experience and I've had a lot of accidents happen before but my helmet always turned out great so it's no worries here so right now we are we have to touch up our helmet uh, once we unmask I am removing paint and they are overspray or bleeding out uh, using my nail polish remover wipes so this is actually uh, a wipe that I use to clean my fingers after I do spraying or if I have any solvent on my fingers or I can clean them up uh, after I have a heavy graffiti session so and you can use it to remove any overspray on your helmet without worrying it will remove paint because we have a lot of clear layers right so these clear layers are protecting your paint from being removed by these wipes and it's really easy to remove all spray this way but if you didn't spray your clear spray too bad and now I'm using my angled brush and my tiny brushes to touch up the paint and get anything that I missed just now maybe I masked them wrongly I didn't mask certain areas and I am just cleaning them up but uh, also you might want to think about what paint you want to use when you are touching up always try to use the original spray paint first so what you can do is uh, you can hold a palette like this if you have a palette you know with those holes and then you just spray really close onto the palette a little bit of spray you can then get the uh, paint out with your brush and touch up with that first but as I told you my yellow and my reds were really really transparent so some of them I use acrylic paint to touch up and luckily for me they were the exact same color and tone so I was really really lucky with that but always always try to um, use the spray first by spraying it onto the palette and using brush to touch up first so right now um, I did a little bit of a whoopsie uh, at the back of my helmet here which you can't see anymore because I have repaired it so nicely so the first thing I want to do is uh, I'm gonna use my fix it Aves fix it sculpt sculpt it epoxy clay to uh, repair my helmet here so what I'm gonna do is I, I actually mix uh, part A and part B together and then after that once they are malleable and everything I start to put them onto my helmet so while I wait for the clay to cure I am going to um, paint the red line so I'm not being very neat in this stage because I have a lot of colors that will be covering this red line which is like the blacks here so I'm a little bit um, I'm a little bit messy so it's fine so now I've done uh, finished touching up the red and now I need to move on to sanding off the epoxy clay from my bag so that it's smooth once more and I start to sand them off So now what have we done so far after we unmask? After we unmask, we touched up, we did the epoxy clay uh, repair and I'm going to spray a clear coat so that everything gets protected under a clear layer again and also because both the yellow and red were done in different passes so the, the spaces in between are still fragile and can be peeled off so I'm just going to spray this with the clear coat as well so that everything has a protective layer over it before we continue so now I'm going to um, sketch all my pinstripes and finish off the design for the pinstripes uh, for the helmet 
so I did all the sketching for these lines and this round line here and also all the lines at the back uh, minus this crazy pin striping. Yeah, so I did all the general big pin, pin striping lines. I'm using an erasable color pencil in blue, uh, which is great because it can be erased. Not all color pencils can be erased and I want to make sure that nothing leaves behind a mark on, to, on the helmet. To kick off our airbrushing, we're gonna need to mask all the areas for the airbrushing. So I'm gonna mask all the areas for the airbrushing and I'm also gonna cover everything else with plastic. I'm also gonna use a round sticker for um, this masking here so that I can get a perfect circle. Mm. We are actually just going to airbrush a couple of things, which is the uh, shadow here, the dark shadow here. And also if you can see, it, there's a slight shadow inside this area. So that's the only two things that we'll be airbrushing this time around. Now it's time to airbrush. I have not airbrushed for a very long time. My airbrush is slightly dented but still usable. I have a, a broken o-ring uh, near my valve, which I use tape to sort it out, so everything still works but I'm not willing to spend any more time trying to get parts to arrive because I don't stay in the United States. Everything else is very far for me. So right now, I'm just going to mix some acrylic with water to spray, as the, to spray the gradient. So it can't be too runny because if it's too runny, it'll start beading up. The water will start beading up and it also cannot be too uh, thick because it will not spray out the nozzle or before it spray out, it would have dried at the nozzle. That is worse because it's a nightmare to clean. Last time I used to use oil-based uh, liquid paint when I'm doing all these, but uh, I threw them all away already. So I'm just gonna stick with acrylics this time. Yeah. Now we are done with our airbrushing and we have to unmask. Uh, once we unmask, we can clean up with um, alcohol wipes instead of the nail polish removal wipes. Alcohol wipes, uh, you can use makeup removal wipes as well. They are the same thing. So um, they are less invasive compared to the nail polish uh, removal wipes as they contain alcohol only. And I can use this to clean up the lines, but you have to be very careful because um, airbrush layers are very thin, they're very fragile and can be easily removed. So make sure you don't uh, use water or anything to accidentally scrub the layer off. And of course, after this airbrushing layer, I'm going to spray clear to commit the changes and to protect my, my airbrushing work so far. Now, after this, we have a lot of masking to do because we are going to do our blacks. So there's a lot of blacks here. There's blacks everywhere, yeah, so there's a lot of blacks and there's blacks here as well, inside, at the, at the earpiece here. So we're also going to do the masking for the logo here and this area as well. So now, um, we're going to start masking for all the blacks. So as usual, we're using our stencil for the front logo and I'm peeling away the excess using transfer tape once more to hold the entire stencil in place so that we can get a clean application onto the helmet. And right now, for our logo at the bottom area, we are going to use a transparent stencil decal because we need to see exactly where we are applying the decal right now. I'm not going to use the white one. Um, because I'm afraid I won't be able to get an accurate um, application. So I'm going to use a transparent one and I'm so happy I have transparent stickers right now, seriously. <laughs> I'm, I'm also leaving back the half strip behind so that I can position the stencil easier when I apply the uh, stencil. So after I finish masking all the parts, I'm going to uh, stick a couple of masking tape here and I started cutting out the shapes for the geometric shapes except for the word. So this will going to be our design for um, this area and cutting out the masking tape is just a method of application for masking helmets. And of course finally we are going to cover the rest of the helmet with plastic before we proceed to spray. So now our helmet is ready and we are going to start spraying the helmet with black. And once I'm done spraying with the black, I move on to my special effects spray. I have this reflecting steel spray, which is marvelous, it's amazing, it's oh my god, it's it's incredible, it's a whole new world, okay. So I use that dazzling, nice spray and 
it is so opaque, it's so good. So one layer is already so amazing. And as you can see, when I'm spraying this, it's like Christmas. Every, everything is glittering everywhere. So it's great, I love this. And of course, once I'm done with the reflecting steel spray, I spray clear once more to commit everything uh, to a protective layer. So right now, we are once again going to unmask our uh, decal. So I unmask everything for the black spray so far and everything's okay. There's just as usual some overspray to fix, some mistakes here and there but the reflecting steel was such a good spray that I could spray onto a palette and I could touch up using the reflective steel spray and still have the opacity and the effects of the glittering uh, steel thingy onto the helmet which is great for touch up really really great for touch up so i have a very very clean looking helmet right now before the black layer So once I'm done cleaning up everything, the overspray with nail polish removal wipes and touching up all the blacks and everything else, the reds, the yellows, everything so far, I am ready for my last base paint coat application which is the blue layer. So right now, before I do that, I'm just gonna spray everything with a clear coat to commit my yellow, red and my black uh, application so far. So now we're back and um, we're gonna get ready for our blue application by masking the areas out first. So certain areas like um, the curved areas here, I'm gonna cut around it so that it's actually a, a rounded um, shape. And it's important to get a clean shape because I want the I want the shape to be as clean as possible with no bleeding. So because there will is we can't really touch up the white. I tried using the pearlescent and the primer white. It does not touch up very well. So I do not want any mistakes. And because this is my last base coat layer. I need to make sure that everything is perfect. So no oversprays this time, no bleeding, as little as possible, no more touch-ups because everything has to be perfect this time. So I'm making sure all the maskings are really, really clean and all the plastic cover-ups are impeccable this time. So it's a good sunny day now and I'm gonna spray my helmet with the cube with the blue colour. I have an old can from Tanya and we are just gonna spray the helmet with this can. And now we're gonna spray clear so that everything can unmask cleanly, hopefully. So before we unmask the blue, I'm gonna mask the airbrush sections. So everything from the blue layer onwards was done within one, two days because I couldn't leave the masking tape on the helmet for long. They'll either start falling off or sticking too much. So I do not have access to the blue tape that you guys have in US also, by the way. So anyway, so the ones that I have here I bought from Ace Hardware, which was really expensive. It cost about uh, $6 here, US dollars here, yeah, the blue tape. So anyway, um, before I mask the blue, I'm going to mask for the airbrush and uh, our airbrushing is just very slight, which is some splatters here. 
and also a green, uh, the striping on also the gradient here and here as well, here as well. So it's just four, uh, yeah, five areas here. Very slight, very slight effect actually, yeah. So just gonna mask for these areas for the airbrushing. And once we have airbrushed, we are finally ready to unmask the helmet. Oh, I'm so lucky that this time when I unmasked, everything was very, very clean. There's not much touch up to do, just a little bit here and there of remove of paint removal. So very very clean touch, very very clean spray this time. I guess I was uh, being careful has really really paid off in spades. So I just clean up some edges and I touch up uh, everything once more. The yellow, the red, the blues, the black, everything that I need to touch up, I touch up once more before I finally, finally, finally seal everything with a clear coat. So this time the clear coat is going to be really, really thick uh, because I want a lot more layers because after this, I'm going to start painting the helmet which is going to be very exciting. So I have done my clear spray and my helmet is protected and now I can do all my painting. So the first painting that I want to do is the uh, pinstriping. So the pinstriping that I want to do first is the big ones first. So I'm just going to use a regular liner brush because I don't have a pinstriping brush. I refused to buy them for years now because I've never done any pinstriping before and this is my first time. So for all the complicated uh, pinstriping designs like this, like this here, so we are going to use um, chalk transfer paper to transfer our design. So what is chalk transfer paper? This is actually a transfer paper that tailors use for garment making. So because this chalk is easily wiped with water, so it's non-invasive. It does not have. It does not leave ink behind which is great because so we can't use um, it's not good to use carbon paper as well because carbon can sometimes leave a residue on um, things so chalk is the best way to go and chalk, chalk transfer paper is a godsend so try to use those for transferring designs to your helmet so once I transfer the design of the pinstripe to the helmet I start to line everything up and here you go, enjoy! For the pinstriping, I am not worried about whether I can get the design or the flow or the line uh, thickness consistency because as an artist, um, that should already be uh, common basic knowledge. But I am more worried about the opacity of the paint because I am uh, using liquid acrylic right now and I just want everything to be opaque so I have to probably do two or three layers again and again to get things to be opaque so I am not thinking about whether can I paint this pinstriping design or not I just want paint to get onto the helmet at this point 
So after we're done our paint striping, we're going to clean them up with water. It's going to be very easy to clean up. We just wipe it with a tissue or a kitchen towel uh, that is wet. So right now, I'm done with my paint striping and we can work on the illustration. And using the A3 printouts earlier that I have, I am going to reposition everything once more onto the helmet for final sketching. And once I've repositioned them onto the helmet, I can begin um, transferring the designs again. So to transfer the designs, I am also using the chalk transfer paper from earlier on. And I'm just transferring. And because they are chalk, uh, it's a chalk transfer, it doesn't stay for long and my hand can actually um, rub them off if it's wet or if my hands are sweating. So what I do is after, immediately after I trace my designs, I am going to line everything with black paint. So now everything is transferred and lined. I am so happy and we are finally going to be able to move on with our painting. And right now we're going to paint this word. So to paint this uh, Chinese calligraphy, I'm using a Chinese brush and um, as usual, I'm not worried whether I can paint this or not. I just want it to get onto the helmet with full opacity. So the first layer of course is not opaque. So the first layer, I'm just getting the movement and the momentum and the energy of uh, my brush stroke onto the helmet then after that I'm going to have to touch up everything again with um, the same brush or with another brush and now I, I'm also going to do the splatters with um, a small brush and instead of really splattering the brush I have to do all the splatters dot by dot so that I have full opacity and so that splatters don't get everywhere else on my helmet Okay, now that we have transferred our sketches, uh, we have to move on to actually painting the helmet and before we can do that, we are going to uh, mix our colours. And I have in my brand new sealable colour palette that I recently bought. Um, I'll share the links below if you want it. So this colour palette here has 24 holes. I wanted the 36 one but it was sold. And it's sealable, it has a rubber uh, sealing uh, thing on top and if I snap all the edges on, it's gonna be sealed tight and acrylic paint can't dry once it's sealed tight, it's amazing, I love it. So I, I have this because I paint murals quite often so this is great for that. So I'm just using a palette knife and using Old Holland acrylic paint to uh, mix all the colours that I need for the portraits and the planes and the smoke. Periodically, I'm also spraying and misting the palette with a water spray so that my paint doesn't dry. So I sh you should do that too if you want to maintain the uh, if you want to maintain the viscosity of the paint. So the first thing that we're going to paint first is the smoke and as usual I am painting for opacity and not uh, creativity. There's no creativity here, I'm just photocopying. So I just want everything to be opaque, so two, three layers again and again and again. So lining again and again and again. Uh, and as I paint, if there are gradients, I need to make sure that I repeat the same gradients each time. And if there's brush marks, I need to make sure that my brush marks are in the same direction and the same strokes every time so that things don't get too messy. Now I'm going to paint the plane and as usual, my gradients have to be repeated for two, three times. I can't paint one layer flat or two layers flat, then the third layer with gradient, it does not work that way. So everything has to be the same layer, the same blending, the same brush strokes again and again. Um, so that done repeatedly to have opacity, so that it does not look messy. Then of course, uh, to have an easier uh, life really. So um, after the gradients are done, I'm just going to line the whole thing. So if this artwork is lined, it's really easy to paint finish because 
I don't have to worry about keeping my edges really really clean because repeatedly painting the same edge every time is going to be an S. So I don't want to do that so I'm just going to finish up everything with line work and that would uh, clean up everything and give everything a pop. Also you will want to um, make sure that each layer is dry before you paint another layer so maybe when you paint uh, one side here and it's drying you can paint the other side because if it's not dry you will just dig up paint as you are applying the paint with the brush. So I do the exact same thing for the portrait, I'm just repeating the um, colours and blending for opacity so if you are um, inexperienced in painting certain subject matters uh, like maybe portraits or buildings, you shouldn't include them into the helmet because it's not something, it's not a surface that you can experiment or figure things out on. Because um, if you figure things out too much on a helmet, your layers get really thick and you can feel your brush strokes when you run your hand through it. And then later on, your subsequent layers of clear coat, you have to do a lot of sanding to get the bad brush marks um, texture out. So it's not a good place or time to, um, to do some experimenting or to figure out how to paint certain things that you have never painted before. But So it's a good idea to just paint something that uh, you have experienced painting, like things that you are good at painting. And that would be something that you can do on a helmet because you are trying to reach opacity here instead of uh, figuring out an aesthetic or figuring out how to paint something nicer or something. Yeah, that kind of goes, you know. Mm. So now that our uh, painting is done, basically the whole helmet is done, it's just the clear coat now. So the, for the clear coat, this time we are going to spray uh, a thick clear coat and multiple layers and then after that we are going to do a lot of sanding to get um, brush mark textures out and then we're going to spray again and sand again and spray again and sand again and of course in between we are going to touch up if there is any touching up to do so because my client insisted that I rush this process because he has a race um, next week so I have to give it to him like tonight that's why I'm doing this video now anyway because of that uh, it, was, it has been raining every day every night for more than 14 hours it's madness previously it was like heat wave so why i'm saying this i'm not trying to like babble on about things that are irrelevant but when it comes to spraying outdoors weather does matter so um, if you are spraying when it's raining you have to be very careful because it's very humid it's colder so the spray would start to get cloudy or start to act up on you so it might not give you the effect that you want it might suddenly not be glossy or be matte or just it just might not work anymore or, and if things fucked up you have to know how to fix it so for me things started to get cloudy for me and I was so frustrated it's very frustrated at this point because the closer you are to nearing completion the less, the less mistake you are allowed to make because any mistake at the end of the process will just screw up the whole thing. So at the end of it, if you get cloudiness on your clear coat, it's very annoying. It's really, really annoying. So I had cloudiness and of course, to fix it, you would actually need a hairdryer or heat gun to heat up the areas that are cloudy and hopefully it goes off. So luckily that worked for me and I regret letting my client brush me seriously because uh, it's not his fault it's mostly my fault I should have said no right because it's weather but and also most and also another thing is I don't have a spray oven because if I do this wouldn't be a problem at all but things happen okay so anyway uh, after the initial few coats of spray I have to remask the words again because I want a pearlescent effect on the words and I spray it again, uh, the pearlescent effect, and hopefully it went 
and luckily it was okay and because it's also a risky thing to do since this is a completed helmet already so the longer the process goes on the more you can't afford to make any mistakes anymore because it will just mess everything up so right now luckily the the pearlescent effect on the world looks okay and i am ready to spray my last clear coat so so now i have my last clear coat and it actually turns out looking like this it's not perfectly glossy which is fine for now because my client is actually going to uh, respray a clear coat that is heat resistant uh, by a professional um, by one of the most expensive line of clear coat sprays um, he's fanatic that way but it's great to have a client like that sometimes so i am not so worried about um, the clear coat right now because to be honest the last clear coat some rain dropped on my helmet yeah because it started raining while i was doing the last clear coat it was really really frustrating but uh, i'm very very lucky this is going back into the oven so uh, if not or else i would have to really really clean this up really nicely because as you can see the highlights here the specularity of this uh, helmet is not like tight a tight nice round spot yet it's a bit scattered and has some bumps and ridges in them and that is certainly not acceptable to my standard and that would be great so right now i'm ready to unmask my helmet for the last time, I am going to unmask all the base masking tapes that were on since the beginning. So, because this is my last time uh, unmasking everything, I need to score everything with the blade uh, before I unmask because the paint that has been on it is so thick already and if I peel it off, it would just peel the entire paint off um, everything else. So, I have to do that and I'm scoring it with a knife. When I say score this time, it means really cutting through paint and scoring the helmet um, carefully. Yeah, you have to be careful when you're scoring things, uh, especially on the helmet. So now, um, the masking will come off cleanly and I have a really clean looking helmet right now and I just uh, clean them up with some wipes alcohol or nail polish removal wipes to remove certain paints on the rubber area and we are good to go really we are really 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 good to go so right now um, the last thing that i want to do is just assemble back the helmet so i am just putting back on the screws here for the visor and this screws here because this is a sharp helmet it's a professional racing carbon fiber helmet these screws here can snap like if you take a close look at the screw here right now it has a ridge in between and it can just snap off so and of course i snapped it off during my second helmet when i was doing it because i didn't know and i sprayed um, over the screw holes and then the paint got too thick and when i screw the screw back on it snapped right off because the paint was too thick and i couldn't get it off it was also stuck in the helmet half the screw was stuck in the helmet can you believe it so I went back all the way to the shop to get the screw back and when I went to the shop, I bought the screw back for about $15 and then I realized the funny thing is my clients own the damn store. He could have gotten the screw for me for free <laughs> when I told him about it. It was so funny. So anyway, screws like this, you don't want to mess with the holes. So try not to spray the hole. That is why I taped the holes there with the circle uh, sticker so that I don't spray over the screws hole this time so that I don't spray over the screw holes this time and things turned out well so after I screw this back on I I don't know I also assemble the straps back I also locked in the visor so a little bit about the screws and why it was manufactured this way it is not stupid it's actually a, a security feature it's a safety feature that is implemented by the manufacturer of this helmet because if you have a crash in one of these helmets, um, the screws actually allow you to easily rip your visor off your helmet in case you couldn't breathe. So that is actually a safety feature on why both the screws can be easily broken. So this is one of the reasons why and why you should buy this helmet, but really, um, I think this is a really great helmet but I haven't painted any other helmets before so I wouldn't know. And right now, I'm so happy to say that I'm done. So this is how it looks like right now after one, a total of exactly 
100 video recordings, including this one, 101. A total of, what was it? 74 gigabytes of video. It has been two weeks through the sun and rain. And thank you so much for watching, being with me the entire journey and sharing the joy and the tears of me and the pain of me painting the helmet. Some I hate doing helmets and I love doing helmets because I feel satisfied when I'm looking at this but when I'm doing it, I hate every moment of it. I hate every moment of it. But when I look at this, I feel like, I can do this again, I can do this again and the cycle repeats and repeats. But anyway, thank you so much for watching, um, being with me on this entire journey. Thank you so much for watching, uh, subscribe to my channel and if you want to see more of my face, you can follow me on Instagram. Bye!